Hi, Scott Rolliter here. Welcome to part two of my video on the most important shot in pool, which is the straight in shot, in my opinion. Today, we're going to talk about the three components of the shot in detail, aim, alignment, and stroke. These are the three areas that you must execute properly to make the shot, and these are also the three areas where things tend to go wrong and cause people to miss. Uh, anytime a student comes to me and says they feel they shoot pretty good, but they're inconsistent, uh, almost always it goes back to some flaw in their fundamentals. And uh, sometimes this even affects fairly good players and they reach some sort of a plateau where uh, they have good days and, and maybe some bad days, but they can't get that consistency there. And again, usually it's because there's some compensation they're making somewhere in their stroke and there could be a series or group of compensations they're making. And then when one thing doesn't compensate properly for a given day, then several other things kind of rear their ugly head. Okay, so the first of the three components is aim. And here we have a relatively straightforward straight in shot. Um, I think most of my students, when they're standing behind this shot, I can see that they're, you know, they can see the line properly, right? I can look from that ball to that ball and draw a line to the pocket and everything looks like it's straight. And I think most students can perceive that properly. I've had a few that have issues, but for the most part, I think most people can picture the overlap of the two circles or the two spheres and, and see that that goes to the pocket. So as I mentioned before in part one, I don't think aim, it's certainly a component of the shot, but I don't think that's where things go wrong for most people. I think where the second component of that is where I think things do sometimes go wrong, which is not actually standing behind the line of the shot properly. And this goes for whether it's a straight in shot or an angle shot, and especially on angle shots is where it's gonna be detrimental. So a lot of pole players that I work with, they don't stand directly behind the shot. So hopefully I have the camera lined up here properly where it's in a straight line. But if you can see, this is where you need to be standing. Your head, your chin, your nose, whatever your chest, whatever you want to think about, that needs to be on a direct line of the shot line. And in this case, the shot line is from the pocket to the eight ball, straight back here to the cue ball in a straight line. So if this is the shot line, I need to be standing right here. This is where it goes wrong for a lot of people. If I'm standing right here, looking down the line, the right half, I'm right-handed, the right half of my body is on this side of the line, which means my back foot, which you can't see, is right over here. My hip, right here. So there are good six to eight inches to the right of my head. So if I get down to shoot this shot, I, I can't shoot it, right? I'm in the way. My chest, I'm squarely in the middle of my chest because my head is right here. So that means I have to turn out of the way. And for most people, that's an uncomfortable movement. So what they do instead is they stand like this. Their back foot's on the line, their hips on the line, but look at where my head is. Here's, here's my cue, here's my hand. They're usually standing like this, but my head's way over here. It needs to be here to see right down that shot line, but it's over here instead. That's where I feel a lot of my beginning and intermediate students have issues, especially on cut shots. So I cannot aim my shot when I'm standing up and I cannot perceive the proper shot line no matter what aiming method I use if I don't get my head behind the shot line. So it is comfortable for me to stand like this, kind of with my feet shoulder width apart and with my foot on the line, maybe I even stand farther back and I take a step in. But regardless of how I do it, my head needs to be on this line. And most people start out with their foot or their hip on that line. So I think there's a few different methods you can use to solve this issue, right? First, and what I see a few people doing, but I don't think it's as prevalent, is you stand square to the shot, your head, your chin, whatever is right on the shot line which means now again, my foot and my hip are over here. So I've got to get them over here to be lined up on the shot properly. So that means I have to take a step in and forward kind of diagonally until my, wherever part of my foot I want on the line gets there. So 
it's a little bit of a cross step movement and you have to be careful when you do that to keep your head on the line too. But I have seen some people do that successfully. So again, what that looks like is they step in sort of sideways. And uh, if you can see, my feet are kind of crossed a little now. So as I step in, I'm basically gonna let my head lead and just let my feet crisscross a little underneath me, put my back foot a little bit in, toward my front foot and then turn as I go in. So it looks something like that. Right, so that's one way to get on the line and stay on the line. Uh, I've also seen some players step in straight, start to bend down like this, and then they pull their foot over kind of sideways to get it under the line. So as they make that final step, everything's kind of in line. I personally don't step in on my shots. I, I can sometimes, but I try to stand in place. So for me, those, those things don't work. Uh, but I have seen people utilize those successfully. I think what's easiest and what I see most pro players doing are one of these other two methods. The first one is to simply lean over. So I'm going to put my back foot and my hip on the shot line the way I normally would stand. And you can see my head's over here. So just lean over. All I'm going to do is just shift my weight so that my head is basically in one line over my back foot which brings me instead of my square position with 50% on both feet, I'm simply standing like this. A lot of pool players, if you really watch where they've got good camera work in these tournaments, you will see, if you look, their head is over more of their back leg, you know, right if they're right-handed, left if they're left-handed. They're leaning over basically just a little bit. It's not a big movement. I don't have to sit here like this on one foot. Just lean over a little bit. Now my head's on that line. Now, as I move in, my hand is here by my hip, which means I don't have to move much when I get down into position. So my back foot is on the line, my hips on the line. So now all I have to do is step in and whether it's an open stance or whether it's stepping in either way, but for most American pool players, you're stepping kind of in at a 45 roughly. So you can see when I do that, my head stays on the line now I can start to turn, get those shoulders stretched out, kick that butt out, sort of, and stretch into the shot. And everything's online because my foot started out online, so I don't have to move a lot. That's probably my preferred method of doing it. So again, just get used to bending over like this a little bit to see the shot line. The second method, which I also see a lot of players doing, is to stand diagonally to the shot, which then brings the head and the hip and everything in line. So again, instead of standing square like this, I'm going to stand with my back foot on the line, but I'm going to stand at a diagonal like this. So I might, I'm about a 45 degree angle. And one good thing when you're using a pool table on a shot like this, especially, you can almost be parallel to the table. And that's probably a good, um, a good approximation of the angle you would need to be standing at. So again, if you see where I'm standing right now, my feet are actually in line with the table. And now if you see, my hand and my hip are right here, right on this line, but my head's also on that line because I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm at a 45 and I'm kind of sitting back in my foot a little bit. So now everything's in line. So now all I got to do is step forward and right down into the shot, everything stays in line. That's my current preferred method that I do on most, most of the shots. But if for some reason the table gets in the way or something else is going on, or if I have to stretch out again, I may, Kind of do the lean method and that i think is a good method as well so either of those two methods i think work great for most people um, and, and it's a very important thing because again i see tons of people when they're cutting balls they, they want to come to me and they want to work on aiming systems and they say i can't aim or i'm always doing this or always doing that but when i stand opposite them and they have a cut shot like this here's the shot line to make the shot and their head is way over here so they're looking maybe at a ghost ball or something here, but they're not looking at it from the perspective of where they're gonna be when they shoot, which means they can't really truly aim the shot until they get down on the shot. And generally you wanna do 95 to 98% of your aiming when you're standing up. So you cannot aim the shot unless you are behind the object you're gonna be hitting, which is the cue ball. So you have to be on this line. Uh, Jerry Bryzak is one of the best instructors I've ever met and worked with uh, back in Wisconsin. He calls it chin lock. So it's really important. Keep your chin on the shot line 
and keep it on there, lock it in the whole way down. Another big thing I see people do, I'll set up the straight in shot again just to show you so it's easier to see. Sometimes they do all that right. So they're sitting here like this, they're leaned over a little bit, let's say, and they're right on that shot line and everything looks good. And then they take that first step with their front foot and they do this. So as they take the step, they let their head go with their foot, with their weight distribution. And then they turn or bend or whatever, and then their head comes back down. So they're always coming into the shot line diagonally. It's the same thing as if you're standing here and coming down diagonally. So I'm basically going dip, 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 dip. Now I can aim. Now I'm already down on the shot. I have a skewed perspective. And I can't really take in all the visual information that I can when I'm standing up. So again, I know I'm harping on this a little bit, but this is a big thing that I see people doing wrong. Get your head behind the shot line and keep it there on the way down to the shot. It's that simple. As far as aiming uh, the shot, I want to talk about a couple things. One, if you're having issues with like say a lawn straight in shot, right? There's a couple tricks you can do. One, you can kind of visualize the whole railroad track analogy. And maybe when you're standing back here, you can be looking at the right edge, the left edge, and kind of matching them up a little bit. So you have a couple points of contact. You've got right, left, and middle. And visualize that track kind of going to the ball and going down to the pocket. But that can kind of help you see everything and really line it up precisely. Uh, some people will look from the center mass of the ball to the center mass of that ball. That's okay too. Um, I like using the curvature of the ball so either aiming with the top of the ball or better yet with the bottom of the balls because when the ball is curving you can visualize true center better uh, at the base of that curve rather than looking at the middle of a two inch object like that and trying to pick out the exact center so right here i can aim the base of this ball through the base of that ball and then through to the pocket and it, it can help me really again dial in on the exact um, line that I'm looking for. So one thing I can do as well is I can aim directly at that part of the pocket and not even worry about the ball. I don't really recommend that, but in theory, um, if I can aim directly at that part of the pocket, I should be able to also just make the ball by aiming right at the pocket. So again, a couple different methods you can use, a couple different ways you can kind of help aim, but I really think of those three things we're gonna talk about with aim. I think the biggest thing is getting that chin, getting that head behind the actual shot line. The second component I want to talk about today is alignment. This is also very important. And uh, even if you do everything properly with the aim, you don't align down to the shot properly, you're also going to have consistency issues. Let's talk about the different components of alignment. Uh, first thing I see is that your pre-shot routine is flawed in some way. There, there's some issue going on with your pre-shot routine that is not allowing you to consistently get down on your shots. Our whole goal as a pool player, we're aiming, doing whatever we're doing from up here, thinking about our speed or spin, whatever we're gonna do to get position on the next shot. Our whole goal is if our eyes get locked into a line, and let's say right here, this is the line. However we start back here, our whole goal is to be able to get our bodies wrapped around that cue in such a way that that cue ends up on the shot line that we were visualizing from a standing position. So typically the simplest way and the most economical way you can do that is the best, but everyone has their unique style and everyone's built a little differently. So some people are going to stand pretty close to the shot like this where they're about one cue length away from the shot. Some people are going to stand back here and take a big step into the ball. Uh, you've got some circuit players and other types of players that use an open stance. You've got people that use uh, like a diagonal closed stance. I see some people where their feet are almost in the same line. I see people where their shoulders are square, they're 45, they're stretched properly. Um, all kinds of different things that happen. Whatever you do, it's got to be consistent. And again, you've got to land on that line that you perceive. Your bridge hand's got to land on that line. And the back end of your stick's got to land on that line so that you're right on the shot line that you thought you were going to be on from an upright position. And that is a real big issue, especially for beginning and intermediate players. If I have, I teach a lot of beginning players, if I have them set up this shot, 
as a as a good intermediate or, a, or an advanced player, I mean, you would have to miss cue almost to miss this shot. You'd have, or severely twist your wrist or something. But to a beginner player, this is not a gimme. Uh, I work with beginners all the time, and they will probably they, they might miss half of these if we're shooting 15 of them because they're not really striking the exact center of the cue ball. Their stroke is crooked. They have other issues that I'm all going to talk about right now. So again, don't overlook this part of it. This is what basically allows you to become a consistent pool player. So let's talk about some of the different components of the pre-shot routine. The first thing is not starting from a, a set position or a, or a fixed position. So I see sometimes people, they're back here, sometimes they're here, sometimes they're here, sometimes the head's over here or over here, sometimes they're turned, sometimes their cue is down here, sometimes they hold it up in the air, sometimes it's out here, sometimes it's like this. All those things are gonna cause consistency issues. You have to build a pre-shot routine that's strong and consistent. So again, for me, I like to have my back foot, sort of the ball of my foot area on that line. I'm going to typically be at a little bit of an angle and kind of back here a little bit. My feet kind of close together, maybe six to eight inches apart. And I'm gonna have my hand and my hip and everything right on my chin, my face, right on the shot line. So I'm gonna be staying just like this. Now, sometimes if I feel like that's putting strain on my knees because I have issues with different joints and things like that, unfortunately, uh, sometimes this move will put some strain on things. So sometimes I'll switch back to being more of an open stance and I'll do what we talked about before. Again, still have my foot on line, still have my hand down by my hip, cue across my body naturally, but I'll lean over a little bit under my leg, take a little weight off that left leg and, and left side that's causing me some problems and just kind of stand more naturally this way. And then from here, that's the position I want to be in. So if I can kind of hold my cue and simulate this, my foot's already in place. I'm going to step forward, keep my head on line. I'm going to start to bend and twist in. My hand's going to reach out and I'm going to end up on line like that. So what that really would look like from a standing position is I'm going to be leaned over and come in like that. So again, I can't make that consistent over and over if I'm standing in different places or doing different things to get down. The next thing is going to be wiggling around. And I talked about this a little bit before, but those are the people that are either kind of real being real fidgety when they're kind of getting set up and they're moving a lot, or they're again, their head's going where their weight is taking them. So a lot of times people will step in. So they're here and they step this way and then this way and then this way. So their head is doing one of these on the way down. Again, that's forcing you to pick up that shot line like right here when really you picked it up up here and you want to stay on it all the way down. So that, that's a key uh, component. Um, the other thing I see sometimes is, for me at least, it's always been a very easy thing to fix. So if I've ever changed from standing, you know, basically on the shot line or on my back foot line where I don't have to make a, a move with my back foot versus standing back, say, half a step where I can step in a little bit, I've always been able to switch back and forth between that pretty easily. Uh, and my students seem to be okay with that too. Your body, I think, senses that distance pretty quick. So of all the changes you can make, that, that seems to be one that happens pretty, pretty easily. But one thing I see is people stand too close to the ball. So let's say, again, instead of being a cue length away, let's say I'm in here. So what happens is they come down to the shot and they're going past the cue ball and then they're backing into the shot. And I'm exaggerating a little, but I see people when they come in like this, they're settling down back into the shot. Ideally, you wanna be moving forward into the shot. So I, I think, again, that's probably not as big of a component as some of the other things, but take a look at your own stroke, see if that's an issue, and try to make sure you're coming down smoothly into the shot. Another thing I see sometimes is when people go, is their tip position, their tip actually goes past and over the shot line and then they kind of settle back into it. Again, it's all about perceiving where you want to be and easing your way into that spot. Don't be in a hurry and do one of these, you know, where you're coming back and forth like that. Again, it, it causes wiggling around and movement. You just want to keep it simple. Cramped setup. Again, a little bit of what we talked about, but, but if you're really cramped, a lot of times I'll see people and they'll be like this and they're just fighting themselves. Their chest is in the way. Um, they don't look comfortable. They're just kind of cramped up there. It's going to be really hard to make a nice smooth swing 
if everything is just cramped. So make sure your stance is balanced. Make sure you feel stretched out. It's always good to have that archer stance where your shoulders are kind of in a line. I know it's kind of uncomfortable, but you don't see too many top bolt players shooting with their chest like this. It's always out like that. Uh, the next thing is gonna be dominant eye. Sometimes people make a really big deal about this. Sometimes people don't believe in it or don't think it's a big deal at all. I personally only think it's kind of an issue if the person is clearly, let's say, left eye dominant, but they're lined up over their right eye or vice versa. Now, I've met some right-handed players that are clearly right eye dominant. We do the whole test. And for those of you that don't know, I'm gonna use the camera as my, as my focal point. Pick a focal point, make a circle with your hands, put them out like this and center the object in between your fingers. Close your left eye. For me, that camera moves about six inches to the right, almost to the point where I can't even see it anymore. Now I close my right eye and it stays almost perfectly still. So because my right eye is closed, my left eye is open, camera's not moving much, that means I'm left eye or cross eye dominant. Most right-handed players are right eye dominant, probably 70% of the people I run into. So I've had some students that are cross eye dominant like myself, but because they're right-handed, and because it's easier to get into position on your right side if you're right-handed, they end up looking something like this, and their right eye is over the cue stick. Well, I know for me right now, I can't even tell if I'm straight or not. It feels like I am, but I could be pointing somewhere totally different. So I actually get the cue under my chin, but my head is turned slightly, which allows the visual input to hit my left eye before my right. So if you see when I do it, I'm not over here like this, like you'll see Alvin Ocean or um, John Moore used to shoot like this. I'm not over on the left eye, but I'm more in the center of my chin, but with my head turned. And that's enough for my perception to be accurate. I still have issues sometimes. There's certain parts of the table where I notice if I'm not really paying attention to my body position, that stick will get just ever so slightly out over the right part of my chin, or my head will not be turned as much as it usually is. And I will swear to you up and down that I'm gonna make the shot, I'm lined up perfect, and I'll shoot it and miss it by an inch or two, or three. And it's all because of that perception issue, because if I'm practicing and I do that and I go back and get in the right position, everything's good. So, and for me personally, I have more of an issue on the right side of the table when I do the left. Um, and I think that could be opposite maybe for people that are semi dominant. So don't, don't put a lot of thought into it, but certainly if you, you know, if you get nice and low on the cue, you know, feel where your cue is resting. You know, take, have someone take a picture of you. See if your head is straight and level, which is important. You don't want to be cocking your head like that one way or the other. See if you're level and then see if your head is turned one way or the other and see what part of your eye or what part of your chin the cue is over. And make sure that matches up with what your dominant eye is. Now I have had a few students that were clearly uh, opposite eye or left eye dominant, but they learned to focus properly using their right eye. And uh, I'll show you later a drill that you can do to, to make sure. And if you do the drill successfully, then, then you don't need to move your head position. Don't move it just because something says you should. But I can tell by watching somebody when they're doing that drill that they're perceiving the center of the ball correctly or not. Last thing I want to talk about, and this is a big one, center cue ball perception. So a lot of my students, again, beginner, intermediate, and sometimes even some pretty good players, are not perceiving the center of the cue ball to be where it truly is. So they will get down on the ball, and their tip will be a quarter tip to the left or a quarter tip to the right. Sometimes a half a tip left or right, sometimes even a little bit more for some beginning players. There's no way you're going to be achieving a high level in pool if you're not able to perceive the center of the cue ball correctly. And that can be a hard thing to fix. I'm working with a few students on that right now. Um, one of the people I'm working with, he actually right now has to line up the edge of his tip at the center of the cue ball, what he thinks is the edge of his tip at the center of the cue ball to hit center ball. And when he does it, he hits the ball as pure as anybody I've seen. But we're slowly training that so that he'll get to a point where when he lines up the left edge of his, of his tip at the center, it actually will be left edge to center, and he'll start getting a spin on the ball, and then we know that perception's corrected. But he's kind of got to override all that muscle memory from all those years of shooting like that. And what happens is people do it un unconsciously, and they end up aiming their cut shots to one side of the table thicker, maybe to the other side thinner, 
because of the squirt, the deflection, the score of all those things that happen when you're not hitting the ball center. And they've just built in compensations to handle it. And they know when they shoot that way, well, I got to aim a little thinner. And when I aim this way, I got to aim a little thicker. But it's not that their eyes aren't seeing the shots correctly. It's all caused by that center cue ball perception. So certainly one of the things you can do for that, and I'll show this later, is doing the old test, you know, where you put a ball like this and, and put the strike vertically and shoot down over the, you know, shoot down directly across the table like this and make sure that ball comes back and hits your tip and make sure it goes end over end. And again, if you're able to do that just into a pocket or rail to rail or short rail to short rail, that'll kind of confirm for yourself that uh, your perception is good. And, you know, a lot of times people will use training balls uh, and the training balls are okay. I have nothing against it. You know, there's a Jim Rempy ball. There's a couple other ones out there, but you know, you've got this nice strike ball here and you've got a nice circle on it. So, you know, set it up on the base as best as you can to where the strike is horizontal and that nine that's sitting there gives you a nice view in the center ball and it helps you take this larger object and focus in. So I have to get my tip focused right on the middle of that. And now because I can see the whole circle around it, I can, I can see where center is. The other trick for perceiving true center ball is to get your tip toward the top of the ball and match the curvature of your tip to the top curvature of the ball or the bottom, but the top is easier because you can look over it a little bit better. And a lot of times when people are down here and they swear they're at center ball and they lift their tip up, it's easy to see that it's, it's on the downswing on the left side or the downswing on the right side. It's not truly in the center. And when they're in that middle part of the ball, they don't perceive it, but when they get up toward the top, they can, they can see that they're up. They're like, you know, wow, a lot of times that's the kind of their, their little aha moment that, oh, wow, I didn't realize I was doing that. Okay, the final component I want to talk about is stroke. That's certainly a biggie and something that uh, most of us are going to be working on for, for a long time, always trying to find that, that nice, sweet, pure stroke. Um, so the first thing with stroke is simply just a poor stroke path. A lot of times that's caused by a poor stance or a poor body setup, but sometimes it's just an actual arm movement that needs to be retrained. Uh, often the arm movement gets out of whack because of something in the stance or the setup, and then that gets grooved over a number of years. And so even though you create some more uh, space and room for the, for the arm to swing, it's still used to swinging in that old kind of crooked path. So let's just say you do everything right. You're standing here, you pick out your shot line, you get down on the ball pretty well. I'm gonna exaggerate this, but this is what I see, right? People come back and they come up like this. And they got kind of that, that pump stroke going on. Um, second thing is I see people, they come back and they have a little bit of a tug, a little bit of an outside tug. So now they've got to reroute that cue perfectly straight on the way through. And what happens is if they don't get that exactly right, they're swiping across the cue ball, putting accidental English on the cue ball, possibly shooting in a different direction if they don't correct properly. Now they're coming from back here and shooting down that line. So all kinds of things can go wrong. Um, sometimes even the backswing looks pretty good, but people don't open their fingers. And so they're, they're holding on real tight. And sometimes when they come through, they flinch or swerve or turn their wrist like this or curl it like that. And all those things are gonna cause problems and consistency issues. So I'm gonna talk about in part four when I go through the drills, how you can somewhat self-diagnose that through doing a drill and possibly even setting up a camera just to record yourself while you're doing the drill or have a friend do it. Again, use the straight in shot as a, as, as a way to diagnose that. A lot of people turn their hands slightly through the ball as they put English on the ball. That's not necessarily a horrible thing if it's done correctly, but on a straight in shot, there's no reason to be turning your wrist or flinching or doing anything else. You're simply trying to deliver that cue in a nice straight line, which is really what you should be able to be trying to do on all of your other shots as well. But this takes all the other factors out of the way and lets you just focus on the stroke. I mentioned flinching. Again, any kind of tightness, flinching. A lot of people, when they come back like this, when they come forward, they squeeze the cue. They're not swinging the cue, they're um, like hitting the cue ball. They're not hitting through the cue ball or swinging through the cue ball. So think about a baseball pitcher, right? Got a ball in my hand. When I come back like this and I throw the ball, it's, I, I'm gonna follow through, even if I'm throwing it a short distance. You're never gonna see a baseball player try to throw a 90 mile an hour fastball and go, 
like that. You, you just you can't do it. But I see pool players all the time. They, they, go to, they go to stroke the ball and they've got these nice practice swings and then they come back and, and go like that and squeeze and tighten. Usually causes their shoulder to move, their elbow to move, the, the cue to move. It, it's a mess and that again leads to a lot of consistency issues. Sometimes it's built into your stroke and it's something that's easy to, you know, something we can work on or whatever. But sometimes it's just one of those things that crops up when you're nervous. We've all seen professional players miss shots in key moments. And a lot of times when they miss, it's due to nerves and something in their stroke broke down. And uh, it happens to them occasionally. It happens to us a lot more. So it's, again, it's something to be aware of and something to consistently work on. Um, sometimes you're just not comfortable on the shot. I don't even care if it's this shot. If this is to win my APA match or this is to win a qualifying tournament to go to Vegas or I'm in a big regional tournament and let's say the shot's just a little tougher and I'm back here like this, I, I might be nervous over the shot and I may try my best to quiet everything down in the room and quiet my head and get down there. But when I get down on that shot, I may be sitting here like this and that ball may look like it's a million miles away and that pocket may look like it's about this big. So for me to go ahead and pull the trigger on that shot with all those conflicting thoughts in my head and all that nervousness and still make the ball, it's going to be a pretty big feat. We manage it sometimes, but more often than not, we're going to manage to miss the ball. So I find sometimes when you get down on a key shot like that and you're nervous, sometimes it helps us to get back up again. You're not going to be any less nervous maybe when you get down the second time, but you're getting a second look at the ball. And, and maybe it'll help that you'll see the same thing you saw the first time, and hopefully that drives your confidence up just high enough to help you make the shot and kind of come back to some of those nerves, or some of those feelings. Uh, head movement's a big one. And uh, it's interesting because a lot of people that have head movement, and I, I have this sometimes as well, you don't always feel it yourself. You know, you have to have somebody standing there with a stick over their head and you know, they kind of pop into it or, um, or you have to see it on video. So certainly if I'm down here like this, again, I do everything right, take my practice strokes, and then I come back and go like that when I hit. That's, that's not gonna be good. Again, keep your head still, keep everything quiet down over the shot. The last thing I wanna talk about, and this is a big one too, especially for straight in shots, for some reason, and there's certain, certain people in literature over the years that have even advocated this, which has probably caused some issues, but people will refer to a stop shot as a punch stroke or a punch shot. And it does not need to be punchy that is not what causes the cue ball to stop. We're gonna talk about that in part three. You don't have to have a certain special stroke to get the ball to stop. You don't have to punch the ball. You don't have to hit it harder. Again, I'm gonna talk about this in future sections, but that is a big thing. And so when I see a lot of amateurs hit long straight in shots, they punch the ball. So what happens when you punch the ball? Your mechanics break down because everything's moving faster. Typically the backstroke, if it was already kind of quick for an amateur, it gets really quick and things start to break down and twist and flinch and curve. And again, that's gonna to lead to inconsistency. Okay, so that's it for part two. Again, we covered aim, alignment, and stroke in this section. Uh, part three is gonna cover the stop shot, which is a very important variety of a straight in shot. And so we're gonna cover some things about that. Appreciate you all watching. And uh, certainly if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment sections like and subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you next time. Thanks.